Unit 13 explores the key of E minor. Let's look at that key signature. We see the one sharp, the F sharp, and we may recall from our earlier studies, what major key has that key signature of F sharp? Well, that's the leading tone, isn't it? And it's the leading tone of G. So G major has the that key of F sharp, and also here E minor. Remember our relationship? Sometimes I mentioned take a five finger scale and step down and then five finger scale. So G major, E minor are intimately related. Let's find, shall we, our tonic and dominant then. Beginning in E minor, our tonic is E and coming up five steps, B. So we get our one and our five. Let's find those all around the keyboard. And if you like, if you're playing some classical music in particularly, in particular, I like to find the one and five in the relative major as well. So one and five in G, and my one and fives and in the E minor. Sometimes that gives us a little bit of a grid, you might say, of how we look at important notes in our scale. Also good to find our leading tone, E minor. So what's our leading tone? It has to be a half step underneath their tonic, so that D sharp. And you may recall, that that D sharp is not in our key signature, so it's not in our natural minor scale, but we force it up here with that accidental in the music as part of our harmonic minor scale. Our chords are gonna be pretty self-explanatory. We have our one and our four, that's A minor as it's built on step four, and our five, seven, which is really that step five, B, right? B seven, just an inversion. So our closed position chords, one, four, one, five, seven, one, or one, I'm putting the root in the bass, four, and five, seven, and one. Wonderful orientation to our key, to our sound, and that prepares us for our pieces. So let's look at Lunar Eclipse at page 148. We're gonna break this E minor chord here in the right hand. And that's an accompaniment figuration. Our melody is actually in that left hand tenor voice here. Notice E is in the bass and it comes up a seventh. But if we think of this E as being this E up here, the pitch selection really has us just descending down chromatically, that is by half steps. Where do we go from here? Look at measure six. Picks up the D again and goes down to C sharp. Continuing measure 10, C. And where does it end here? Well, it didn't quite end, but it arrived at step five. That powerful step five, and it goes back under and back up to the five and one. Let's listen then to that chromatic line as we play the piece because that's going to be what the ear has to latch onto. It carries the listener through the context of this melody for that whole section. 